afternoon, everyone. My name is Jamie Vogel, the EVP of Sales and Marketing here at Transportation Impact. Welcome to the next episode of our Let's Talk Ship discussion series. If you joined our last episode or previous ones, welcome back. If this is your first time attending, welcome. Our team has developed this series with the goal of providing you with education, ideas, insights, and data related to the ever-changing shipping environment. Today we'll be discussing one of the hottest topics in shipping today, the top takeaways from the UPS and FedEx general rate increase. We encourage you to ask questions by utilizing the questions section of the GoToWebinar pane. We promise we'll take the time to answer as many as we can at the conclusion of our discussion. Also, we have a few visuals to help facilitate our conversation today. So if you'd like a copy, it can be downloaded from the handout section of the webinar pane. My guest today is TI's only, Kelsey Plummer, Analytics Intelligence Manager. Kelsey, thanks for joining me today. Thank you, it's great to be here. Awesome. Well, Kelsey, you've been with Transportation Impact since 2016. Um, you grew up in the Midwest where you are today with your family up in um, up in Illinois. Um, and, uh, you know, your experience really drew me to having you discuss this topic today because um, you have a, a bachelor's in market research from Bradley University. And since working at Transportation Impact, you really have become um, a small parcel expert um, and consultant for our sales team and for clients, and you really have your finger on the pulse. So I'm just excited to have you here. But most importantly, today's your birthday. So happy birthday, Kelsey. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. I hope you get to celebrate with your, your family later on. Well, let's jump into it. So each year we see varying themes in the general rate increase. And most years, each carrier responds to the market with similar increases, uh, following the same themes. Uh, last year, there was a target on larger, heavier shipments, and there were significant, pretty significant increases. So what are you seeing this year, Kelsey? Yeah, so this year, those shippers with large, heavy items can kind of breathe a little sigh of relief. Um, with 2021, both UPS and FedEx kind of shifted gears a little bit from previous years. Um, this year, you'll see some lightweight packages getting the largest of increases um, and deferred air services. So uh, this thing that we have up right now, this chart shows that that's exactly what it shows with the one to nine pound packages seeing a larger increase, especially in two and three day. And then that increase kind of tapers off as you get into those heavier weight breaks. Got you. Well, that makes sense, you know, with the, the e-commerce explosion. I was reading this morning that you know, 30% of global consumers discovered at least one form of online shopping during peak COVID, whether that was, you know, ordering groceries online or ordering food online um, or ordering from a home improvement store and picking it up or having it delivered to their home. Um, but of the, those 30% global consumers who said they discovered one form of online shopping said they want to continue that um, after, if there is an after, uh, this is all over. But I also read that four out of 10 shoppers worldwide discovered new online stores they'd, pur they, they'd purchased from for the first time. And 85% worldwide said they continue purchasing from those new stores with Gen Z and millennials leading some of those stats. So those are, to me, those are really interesting stats on how people are you know, changing their shopping behaviors and how there's exponential interest in continuing that. So. Um, with that explosion in e-commerce, how are the carriers responding to that in the GRI? Yeah, so with this year's uh, general rate increase, you can definitely see the carrier's response to COVID and that e-commerce explosion. Currently, 70% of the carrier's volume is between one and five pounds, and one of the largest areas seeing an increase is the ground minimum. Uh, a zone two one pound package was 823 in 2020 and will be 876 in 2021 with both carriers. That's mm -hmm. a 6.44% increase. That's significantly more than the standard 4.9%. Um, another hot topic that was uh, just released this week from UPS is the increase to sure post rates. So sure post exploded with that e-com and the sure post minimum with UPS is increasing 7.3% with one to 10 pound packages, which is where SurePost ships the most um, with 6.3% increase. Wow. FedEx on the other hand, 
their smart host minimum um, matched that of ground with only a 6.44%. And the one to 10 pounds saw an increase of 5.8%. So, gotcha. yep. yeah. So in 2020, uh, smart post was definitely the cheaper option and it will continue in 2021. Mm -hmm. And FedEx has typically had that advantage, um, you know, in smart post rates, right? And so it's interesting to see UPS take such a huge increase, maybe telling the market um, they're more interested in having those packages in their in their ground residential or ground commercial networks. Interesting, very interesting. You know, ground minimums is something that we talk to our, our clients a lot about. It's um, not the easiest thing to understand when you're trying to calculate package costs. Uh, that $8.76 minimum for, for 2021, you know, a shipper that might have a 50% discount on that zone two one pound package won't be realizing that full 50% discount. That's exactly yeah. right. What would you see? That being said, um, Kelsey, because I, I think that's an overlooked part of package costs a lot of times. Uh, what would you say is is another thing that shippers may overlook as it relates to the price increase? So one of the other areas besides the minimum is definitely that of surcharges, um, especially in the release. The carriers, um, they say 4.9% average cost increase. What they're not telling you is that that's only the package, not all of the other charges that make up a total shipment cost. So mm -hmm. surcharges are definitely one of the areas where you'll see a much larger increase. In 2021, the most common surcharges see an increase anywhere from 5 to 20%. Wow. Um, and Yep, so that's much larger than that 4.9%. Mm -hmm. um, also, some things that the carriers sneak in are other rule changes and things like that that um, they're not seeing in their current data, so they might not expect it come 2021. Um, one of the rules that the carriers both announced is the additional handling rule change. Um, so in 2021, you'll get a charge for girth. Um, it'll be an additional $16. And that's now the fifth type of additional handling charge with both carriers. Wow. What are the other um, the other four additional handling? Length, width? Yeah, so you have package, dimensions, weight. Um, yeah, so length, width, weight, dimensions. Sorry, that is dimensions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wow. So even um, some of those uh, larger shipments, um, you know, with certain types of what would we what we would call ugly packages, are now going to be taking on an additional um, an additional surcharge. Yes. So those surcharges that that you referenced going up from anywhere from five to to twenty percent. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, those specifically and how they've been affected. Yes, yeah, so um, residential surcharge is one of the biggest areas affected by the increase. Um, every shipment that is sent to a residential address gets hit with the surcharge. Um, FedEx shippers will see an 8.75% increase um, and a $4.35 charge, while UPS shippers will see an 8.54% increase or a $4.45 charge. Mm -hmm. It's worth noting that um, this charge has seen a 20% increase since 2018. Um, other areas that are seeing a large increase are delivery area surcharge, um, those packages going to locations that are outside of urban areas, um, drivers have to drive further, less, more stops and less area, like less stops and more like driving. Um, so the postal increase on DAS is actually seeing a 20% increase with both carriers. So not only is UPS having a huge increase to their sure post cost, the base rate, but then on top of that, any DAS packages will also see a 20% increase on top of that. Um, the other delivery area surcharges will see anywhere from a 5 to 12% increase. Wow. And the other thing to watch out for is um, just the assessment of uh, the delivery area surcharges. Those zip codes are, are subject to change each year, um, causing even further confusion with a lot of our clients on how that will how that will be assessed. Yeah, there's more and more continually added to the list 
um, especially with the USPS um, doing away with post offices in some areas, um, they're getting more and more zip codes because of that reason. Yeah, absolutely. So those are all great takeaways from both of the, those are those are the highlights, right? F for both FedEx and UPS uh, in the general rate increase. So Kelsey, you have the um, the luxury of seeing everything that comes in our door since you work, uh, you know, in analytics and intelligence for transportation impact. You know, some of our folks might see um, just their client's view of it, right? But you see everything. Um, so in, in your opinion, what can a shipper do to avoid some of these increases? Yeah, so um, there's no way to completely avoid all of the increases. Um, you can try mitigating them to the best of your ability. Uh, and that can be different for every shipper. For some shippers that may be passing along that cost of the increase to the customers. Um, for others, it may be offering some sort of incentive to their customers to pick a lower cost service or a lower delivery speed. Um, and even for others, that may mean getting a contract addendum or even renegotiating your contract. However, before you can do any of that, the first step any shipper needs to take is understanding their behavior and characteristics. Um, only once shippers can understand this, they can start pinpointing the specific areas that will see the largest impact of the GRIs and start planning for their budget in 2021. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it all starts with it all starts with their data. Most of our webinars come back to um, come back to that understanding by uh, utilizing the data that you have to really understand what your current costs are and how these increases will will affect you. Yeah, so. Those are great takeaways, Kelsey. So really the five takeaways are lightweight and two to three day shippers have the heaviest increases. Um, ground minimums having um, an over 6% increase. Uh, sure post rates increasing by more than uh, six to 7%. Um, and a, a new additional handling surcharge girth um, which is now the fifth additional handling surcharges, surcharge. And also, um, last one was surcharges increasing anywhere from 5 to 20%. That, that package cost, the 4.9% that they publish is really just a package cost, doesn't include those surcharges. And SurePost and SmartPost DAS are, are most notable um, at a 20% increase. Great takeaways. So we've got a couple of questions. Um, from the audience. Um, Kelsey, in your opinion and the things that you see, uh, why one question from the audience is why wouldn't girth be covered in the charges within the length, width, and height dimensions? So I'm not really sure exactly that. Um, so um, so you do have it based on length and with the package, just um, how it, if it exceeds a certain amount. So the girth is another charge um, separately. Um, mm -hmm. So that's two length and two um, two width plus two height, um, two times width, two times height plus length to get a girth. So that's just another like charge that a package could be hit with um, that might not make it on the um, specific length or width or height. Yeah. Mm -hmm. another and it's and they get hit with a surcharge if it's over 105 inches that calculation correct correct yeah good question good question so we, another question um that one of our audience members has as it relates to avoiding these costs um they're asking for our take on things like utilizing UPS access points um, rather than having their shipments go all the way to an address that might get hit with DAS or um, a residential surcharge. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so in 2020, an access point was definitely a, a good option um, that was free. Any customer could get on and choose, I want to pick up my package at Michael's or Kohl's. Um, Unfortunately, in 2021, I'm not really sure what UPS was doing, but they've decided that every package that ships to an access point is going to be charged a fee of $2.99. Yeah, so out weighing that out against the potential additional surcharges that they might have for DAS or, um, or residential. So that's a, a really good call out. It was free, now it's not. Yes. <laughs> Um, another question we have from the audience, Kelsey, is um, 
as it relates to delivery area surcharges and the zip codes. Where can a shipper find the zip codes um, that will be assessed a delivery area surcharge? Yeah, so both UPS and FedEx.com, you can go in and search uh, delivery area surcharge and it will give you the list of the thousand and some hundred that have each um, each zip code that's either a regular or an extended delivery area surcharge. Great. Um, another question. Um, let's go over let's go over that girth uh, the girth calculation one more time for the for the audience because we've got a couple of folks asking us to to review that again. Talk about um, how it's assessed and um, the inches at which at which it's assessed. Yep, so girth um, is two times the width plus two times the height plus length. Um, and it's anything that exceeds 105 inches will get hit with that new additional handling surcharge. Mm -hmm. And are they assessed per carton for each of the five? So it's per shipment. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So it could be a couple of cartons uh, within one shipment. Yes. Great. We've got a couple of more questions uh, coming in. This general rate increase always generates a lot of interest. Um, this one is based on uh, one rate packages. Will the one rate packages for FedEx be included in a two day increase? Good question. So they're not included in the normal two day increase. Um, FedEx did release separate one rate um, increases in 2021, um, but that's not included in the um, two day metric that we were showing earlier in that handout. Okay, good. Positive. One feather in the cap for, for FedEx. Um, another question we have uh, from the audience, Kelsey, is um, can you describe how the minimum charge affects a package cost? I think we, we alluded to it earlier, but can you describe it? Yeah, so any package, um, there's a floor as far as UPS and FedEx set um, how low a package can go. So at this point, it's $8.76 for a ground package, one pound zone two. So say you have a 50% discount, but you're shipping a one pound zone two package, you're still going to pay that $8.76 and not receive your 50% discount because that's the minimum. And a package can't be cheaper than that minimum. <laughs> Correct, that's like the floor of what it, what it, would, what it will cost. Yes. <laughs> It's pretty significant. I, I mean, uh, I can't tell you how many of our clients are. Um, well, to your point, seventy percent of the shipments are within that one to five pound, one to five pound range. So it's an important, an important thing to know how to how to calculate what your costs will be. This next question, um, Kelsey, I'll probably kick the answer to this off. Um, the ne the question is, how do we know the additional handling surcharges are per carton or per per order when trying to help our customers um, you know one piece of advice i would have i'm not sure what the role of this the um the attendee who who asked the question one thing that's important like if you're in sales or or you're client facing um you'll have to work with your your warehouse um to really understand how they're going to to put the shipments out so that way you can give a proper quote um, to your customer and not be hit with charges that you that you weren't expecting. So and store those somewhere. They're going to ship that way each time. They're going to load these types of cartons into one shipment every time. Or you know, will they do it differently the next time? You'll you'll want to do some discovery with uh, your warehouse folks. Kelsey, any thoughts there? Yeah, that's exactly it. So know your box sizes and what those like work out to. Um, also, when you're entering your dimensions and manifesting a package make sure you're actually putting those dimensions in properly and that'll give you um, what that shipment cost will be with that surcharge already built into it if you put in the wrong dimensions then you're not going to see that charge and you're going to get hit on the back end with that um, and not charge your customer the correct rate mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and, and that's a really good call to, not to be too off topic, but um, you know, dimensions are a, are a big deal. These are scanners at these hubs that are that are that are taking the dimensions of these packages. Sense check those things um, when the when the invoice comes in. Great. Well, I think that's all the questions we had this afternoon, Kelsey. Thank you so much for um, for attending and giving us those five key takeaways. Um, I appreciate your time. Thank you. It was a pleasure being here. Awesome. So this webinar audience will be available post this call via our follow-up email as well as our website. Uh, those who provided their mailing address will receive a professional ship talker pen like I'm wearing today. Um, and if you did not provide your mailing address, you can simply respond to our follow-up email to receive one. Uh, our, next, our next Let's Talk Ship webinar will be a special one uh, in January. It'll be our first one of 2021. Um, with one of our strategic partners, Omnia Partners. We're, we're really looking forward to that. Um, we also look forward to a brand new year like many of you. Um, we hope you and your loved ones have a ha happy and healthy holiday season, and we'll see you next year.